Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we'll talk about timer triggered Azure functions, how to create the brand new timer triggered Azure function in Visual Studio, how to publish that function and we'll use that function in order to execute specific task and in our case it will be the use case of how to get the notification, the email notification when the Bitcoin price will drop. So we'll just have the specific threshold and our Azure function every the cron schedule will just check the current Bitcoin price in the US dollars. If it will drop below our threshold, then we'll receive an email notification. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button down below, write the comment, give me a like, and as always, now we're going straight into the code. And now the very short introduction of what the Azure Functions are. So Azure Functions is the serverless compute service provided by the Microsoft that enables you to run event-driven code without having to manage the underlying infrastructure. So you can just focus only on the business logic and Azure will just do the rest for you. And in today's video, we'll focus on the timer trigger Azure Functions that allows you to run the function on the predefined cron schedule. So it means that it will be useful for the tasks that need to be executed at regular intervals, such as the data processing, maintenance tasks, or sending periodic notifications. And in our case, we'll use this third option. So to send periodic notification when the Bitcoin price will drop below the certain threshold. As we see on the screen, this is the Bitcoin price checker Azure function that we'll implement in this tutorial. So at first, what you can see, this is the attribute that it's called function and inside of it, you'll just type the name of the function that will be then displayed in the Azure portal once you publish your function into the Azure. You see also that we have the constructor and in here we are injecting the HTTP client factory in order to create an HTTP client because we would like to and execute the get request to obtain the data from the external service. And as you see, also we have the timer trigger and this timer trigger inside of it has the cron schedule and this is set to be executed once every five minutes. And then we have the body of the method that is cut a bit and it will be implemented in this tutorial. All right, guys, so in order to create the brand new function app, we would like to search for the Azure and then we'll have the Azure functions on the top. So we'll just select the Azure function project. We'll click next and I will just call the project name as the demo function app and I will just call the solution as the functions. And now when we click next, we'll have to, yes, we'll have to select the functions worker. So we'll use the .NET 8 isolated long-term support. We'll use the timer trigger for that. And for now, we'll use the cron schedule as the every second. And then after the whole development, we'll just set up uh, this cron schedule for something else like the every one hour. So when I will just create, it will create for us the whole project. And now, as you see, it created for us the sample function that is called function one. So we'll just rename this function to the bit, Bitcoin price checker. And this Bitcoin price checker will be also in here in this function attribute as the name. And we would like to go to the program CS because we would like to register the HTTP client and inject into our Bitcoin price checker function. So when I will go to the program CS, here you have like the normal program CS of the .NET 8 web API, but it's specific to the functions. And now we can also register here some other services. So I will just type services dot add HTTP client and We'll just call it name of our Bitcoin price checker. When we will go to the Bitcoin price checker, we can just remove that logger because we don't want to log 
anything in that video. So I'll just remove that. Also, the whole body of that run method. And now we'll just inject ihttp client factory called factory and we'll just have the private read only read only http client client and it will be fetched from the factory so we'll just use the factory dot create client and name of Bitcoin price checker. And for the purpose of getting the current Bitcoin stock price, we will use the finapp.io free API that you can just register and get your free API key. So once I will click that, I have the value for our request to inject this API key in order to be able to access the specific endpoint. And this endpoint is called quote. So to get real-time code data for the US stocks and the sample response will be as follows. So the current, the high, low, open, and so on and so forth. So we'll just take this API key from the previous step. And we'll just uh, give this API key into the uh, query parameters. And then also we'll just retrieve the sample response so the current Bitcoin stock price. So now after doing all of these steps, we can just start with generating the HTTP request and then getting the proper response. And now once we are ready after getting the finapp.io API key, now we can just start and we'll just assign this API key what we have uh, retrieved from this API symbol will be the Binance uh, BTC USDT. So the symbol for the uh, Bitcoin stock price and the URL will be finapp.io slash API V1 quote symbol. We have to pass this one and the token will be the API key. And now once we have that one, we'll just create the try catch block and in here in the try, we would like just to get the HTTP response message called response and it will be equal to the await HTTP client get async and we'll just pass this URL. We have to define our function to be async task instead of void, so async task. And in here, we'll just ensure the proper status code. So response dot ensure status code. And after that, we would like to create the model for our response, because as you remember, the response is not that it will be, for instance, $5,000, but it will be the, uh, the current price the high, low, and so on and so forth. So we have to create a model, deserialize it, and then based on the price, based on the current price, we'll just decide if you would like to send an email or not. So I will just create one directory called models, and it will be called Bitcoin quote, so Bitcoin. Bitcoin quote.cs. I'll just add that one. After going back to the finapp.io webpage, we see the sample response will be not what we expect. So it will not be the current price, high, low, and so on. So with the proper naming convention, but we have only the letters. So C, H, L, O, P, C, and T. So we have to use the JSON property name attribute on the top of our properties. So I will just go back to the Visual Studio. In here, I will just create the JSON property name for the current price. D was the change, so the difference. Here you have also the change, uh, person change, DP and so on. So this is the whole model that we would like to use for the serializing our response. Now I will just mark this also as the public. 
and when we will go back to our function. And now in our function, we can just take the response body from the response.content.read as string async, and then we will have the quote. So JSON serializer dot deserialize, we are giving us the type, the Bitcoin quote that we have just created, and then we'll just getting the whole Bitcoin quote out of that. So now we can just check if the quote dot current price is, let's say, lower than this value. If it is, then we'll just send email. If not, then we'll do nothing. And if we have the exception, then also we would like to send email. And in just a while, we'll just create the function to get the SMTP client and send to the specific email address. Now we'll just run our function to check if everything works fine for now. So I'll just run it. As you see, it was executed. We have the response body as we was expecting to receive. So CD and so on and so forth. And the quote was properly deserialized and as we see the current price is lower than six five and three zero dollars so we would like to get the email notification so now we have to implement the sending email logic and now we can create the local function that will be called send email async and it will take the response message as an argument so i'll just Type async task send email async and it will take as the string the email and inside of it we'll just create new mail message mail message new mail message and inside of it we'll just have the from and from will be the new mail address mail address and my test mail address will be called test app azure func gmail.com subject will be called bitcoin price dropped and the body will be the email of course and after that we have to specify to whom we would like to send this email so mail message to add and we'll just use the same email address. So, so it will be from this email address to the same email address. And then after that, we'll just using our SMTP client and then SMTP client dot post. It will be the smtp.gmail.com the port for this smtp host will be actually the 587 the port and smtp client.credentials will be new network credential and we have to pass the email. So this one and we have to use those quotes here. And after that, we would like to input the password that we have generated for that email for the usage of an application. So I will just take this password and now we have to use the smtp smtp client dot enable ssl we will have to set this to true and we we'll use await smtp client dot send mail async and we have to pass this mail message now we can use the send email async in here. So we'll just remove that comment and 
we have to, of course, pass an email. So I will just I've just prepared one email. And this email will be the current Bitcoin price, the current price from our quote object, and then uh, how it changed and today's range. So I will just take this email and pass in here. And also, in case of any exception, we also would like to send an email. So send email async and exception occurred and it will be the exception dot message. Message and we have to use the dollar sign prompt. And now we would like to check if our email actually will be sent and we can receive some kind of very important for us information when we would like to invest in Bitcoin. So when I will just run our function app and as you see, it just went out from that if. So when I will just stop debugging and we will go to our Gmail, as you see, we received an information that Bitcoin price dropped with the current Bitcoin price change and the today's range. So now we can just go and we can just publish our Azure function, set up the different Chrome schedule, and then we will be actually ready to receive an information in case of the Bitcoin price will drop. Alright guys, so now I have changed the cron schedule to be executed once every five minutes. Now I will just click publish on the demo function app. I will just create the new publish profile for the Azure. So we would like to select the Azure of course to host our function app and also the Windows one function app. And now you have to select your subscription and then the new instance and and as you see, automatically it selected our subscription. You have to create, if you don't have any, the one resource group. The plan time will be the consumption. The location will be Germany West Central. And I will just mm, use the Azure storage as well. If you don't have any, you have to create the storage account. And also I will connect it to the application insights. So I will just create this published profile and then we'll just publish our function up to the Azure in order to be executed once every five minutes, we will receive an email notification the same as we have done this in our local development as we test this locally. As you see, our published profile has been created and when we'll click finish, plan was created and now we can just click publish. And as you see, after publishing our publish profile, it created for us the demo function app. And as we see, we have our Bitcoin price checker function inside of it. We have the timer trigger and the status that is enabled. We can go to the metrics just to see the function execution count. And now I will just go back after a couple of minutes just to see if our function will actually be executed every five minutes and we will receive the notifications in our Gmail account. As we see on the metrics of the Azure function, our cron schedule was properly interpreted by the Azure function. Everything was executed every five minutes. So as you see on the chart, it's executed actually yeah, every five minutes. So we probably received six emails from our six executions of that Azure function. So now we can go to the Gmail account and as we see, we have six brand new emails that we received from our Azure function.